I've started the recording. Thank you. So welcome to this session. And as I mentioned, please write down your name and email address so everyone can contact uh, each other. So today's agenda is, first of all, I will just uh, update you with our network. And then we will have a brainstorm session, which will also serve as a knowledge sharing capacity development, or you can say even small training. Event. And the topic of today's dialogue is meaningful stakeholder engagement. And we will discuss why it is important to have a meaningful stakeholder engagement. And we will try to further then, if we have time, to look at how we can identify, map, and analyze our stakeholders and design and implement engagement plans and assess and measure the outcome and of the engagement plans. So everyone needs to engage with this dialogue. And uh, I will just facilitate uh, whoever comes and how we go ahead. Um, then we have a fantastic opportunity to listen from Dr. Jonathan Eluguma Muludi, who is an associate professor for, from Congo. He has uh, sent us a poster presentation and he would like to discuss. So he will do that. And finally, we will just say thank you and closing. So this is what we have today as in our activity. So thank you again, everyone, for joining today's webinar. And uh, please feel free to uh, put on video if that is allow, uh, like your, uh, if it is allow, your bandwidth allows you. So we know that you are here and also um, please feel free to ask questions or chat with each other in the chat box. So about the global sustainable futures, as I have already mentioned you in the kickoff meeting, it is not my network, it is our network. And I want you all to participate constructively within this network. And I want you, and you all are named as coordinators, not members. So remember that you have to coordinate with the activities. It is not compulsory, it is voluntary, and it also depends on your time and resources you have. Uh, but however, try to initiate activities, uh, try to expand on activities which you are doing and bring on everything on board so we can substantially grow. Uh, with the good news that we have grown up to 30 countries now, and we have 52 coordinators with us, working with us. So that is an, a very good achievement within a month or two months. Um, and I'm proud of that too. And we all have to be proud of that too. Um, and again, as uh, you know, that our vision is, uh, uh, to bring some changes uh, with and uh, to bring sustainable global sustainable in line with sustainable development goals. So we have a very broad area. So uh, that helps that we do not limit any discipline or we do not limit any area or topic. So bring in each and everything what you want to discuss or expand on your expertise and show showcase your ex expertise. Also, I would like you to go beyond your own remit and try to engage in international activities. So if you have anything in mind, do let me know or do let us know in the group so we can help each other to uh, develop and propose the activities and uh, implement and then deliver those. Uh, so 
uh, you must have remembered last uh, month I gave you an email about uh, uh, going global 2021. Uh, it, it, it is a very good opportunity to engage with uh, education sector, how it is changing in the future. And uh, so I have received a five, I, I actually received a 10 uh, interest, uh, interest from 10 people, uh, which was really encouraging. However, I found that uh, five of them are in Portuguese. So uh, I suggested that we propose for two sessions, but unfortunately I cannot propose uh, because it allows only one person to propose one session. So I have asked uh, someone to lead on Portuguese team and apply for one session there. And one of the session in English will be proposed by me. And so, uh, we are doing two activities as part of our uh, network in a global arena, so which is really good start. <clears throat> now, uh, so that is, that is me and uh, uh, that's all I had to update. And uh, also uh, I send you some uh, activity, uh, like report in the activities, which uh, several people uh, propose activities. A uh, few of them were from January, but I think people have got busy and they did not get time to produce any activity this month. However, we'll get uh, um, more people, like they have showed interest and they have committed also uh, from February. So I think we'll get some interesting events going on from February. And so, that is all. So we will start now uh, with our uh, this br brainstorming session. Okay. So, uh, uh, why is it important to have a meaningful stakeholder engagement? So here, like, what do you understand by meaningful stakeholder engagement, and why is it important? Can anyone start saying on this? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, whoever is saying, please tell your name first so that we know who's speaking and then you can carry on. Yes, I heard someone was trying to speak. Yes, Yes, who was it? Hello, it was Jonathan. Yes, please carry on, Jonathan. Yes, I said that uh, the agenda is very good. Uh, Thank you. We can, yes, uh, you can start. You can start the meeting. Uh, all right, okay, I will give you some uh, thoughts on, on this. As we have already seen that with the evaluation of sustainable development goals, we want everyone to be uh, included um, in uh, strategy and policy and decision making. We also uh, know that the sustainable development goals are for the people. And so therefore they need to be built by the people. The sustainable futures can sustain only if people involved in it and they own this, own their, own their own future. And therefore stakeholders, they are minor, major stakeholders, all needs to get engaged. With whatever policies, whatever practices we propose or we decide, we, I, we in the sense, the whole stakeholder group or, or for example, say food system, then if within that food system, we have several stakeholders. And if these stakeholders are not engaged and if they do not own these uh, practices and policies, then they, we will not be able to buy in them. And we will not be able to move our futures towards sustainable, whatever we have desire, desired to be, okay? And therefore, 
stakeholders engagement is very very important in anything what we do uh, even the research uh, fundings and research calls ask to highlight who are our stakeholders and how we get engaged with them that is one of the priority in any of our research or even for the government policies now it has been uh, a priority since the UN Article 14 has highlighted that we need to have a stakeholder engagement. And very recently, there are a few regulations also uh, for all the policymakers or agencies uh, at high levels, say, for example, EU level, or it could be at uh, Africa level and so on that it has become compulsory to have a meaningful stakeholder engagement. And therefore I have chosen this subject as it is of very, very high significance. Uh, okay, now, now can anyone tell more on this? Any examples come to your mind? Can you think of the societal systems? What societal systems are priority at the moment? Though we are, I, I know that we are dealing with the COVID situation and that has made actually uh, highlight that whatever our priorities, we have been uh, challenged by few systems to make them more sustainable. For example, can anyone tell examples? Um, so, I, <laughs> hello, I'm Marcus, I'm from Austria, and I'm aware that I'm probably uh, among the younger people here, so I'm not sure, um, um, I'm a little bit afraid to talk here um, as like the first person because um, there's always the risk of not seeing too much of the whole picture or being aware of um, the bigger discourse um, since, well, as I said, I'm um, because of my age probably. <laughs> Um, anyways, what I can what I can see, I've been in a meeting earlier today, and what I where I see a challenge is in the education of different fields and having sustainability and the sustainability thinking in different levels built in in the education of different fields. Um, because I mean, I'm I'm an architect, so um, it to most of us it's very obvious that sustainability has to, be, to play a, a very important role in our work. But I know of many engineers <laughs> and to them, it's maybe not so obvious that this is, they, they're very good at, at solving um, certain problems. And that's very, very important. I'm not trying to uh, make that uh, <laughs> less of, of value, but I think the, um, the question has to be asked, like, why are we solving certain problems? Or we solve the problem, <laughs> and I think that sometimes um, I, I would I would place that back to the education of different fields. In, for example, um, in my related fields, uh, engineering. Um, but I guess there's a there's a lot of fields which are um, where this the sustainability thinking has to be um, more infiltrated and implemented in the educational system before we, as the young people, are then. <laughs> playing our our games in the in the real world um, because um, if we're not educated that way that how are we supposed to to deal with those uh, things so that's something I can think of very good point very good point here with the education what we are trying to teach students should be embedded within a, a sustainability so that they can go out in the society and put it into the they should be given education on sustainability principles and how decision making. And that is very right. Now I'm going to read few comments here already on the chat that uh, Nisa Bezi is saying that gender inequality and unequal access to care, that is the biggest challenge here. And I would agree with that definitely. Uh, then uh, Hazel is saying to you, Marcus, 
that all views are important and equally valid. So don't worry. And we want youth to get into this discourse. And therefore, he, she is saying youth brings with it new insights that may not arise from those of us who are older and have been working in the area for a longer time. So she's exactly right. And then uh, we have another comment from Nizabasi 18 that deprivation of girls and women to education in, in some societies. I would say not only some societies, but every society has still not grown up to the equality for women. And um, so there is inequality, definitely. Hello, Professor Irene. Welcome. So, uh, and now uh, I will go to uh, Afbar, who has raised his hand. And so, uh, please, Af Afbar, can you uh, give us your insight? Hi, everyone. Um, sorry, my video is not on because I have very poor network at home, but I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Don't worry about that. Please carry on. And please, the okay. country uh, also. Yes, of course. So my name is Helen and I work in Sweden and I'm coordinating a partnership with the University of Randa. So I thought I could give a short example of how we are working with stakeholder engagement in this partnership. So Wonderful. We are, please go ahead. So we are focused on the sustainable development goal number seven on sustainable energy. So we have a partnership between our university in Sweden and two more Swedish universities and the Randa, uh, University of Randa with our colleagues there who initiated this, uh, this, this program. And it's a five-year program where we are training PhD students and postdocs. But we decided to also establish an innovation hub at the center in Kigali. So what we're doing with this hub is to create a bridge to stakeholders in the energy sector and in government and society. So among the first activities, uh, we have started with um, what they call an incubation uh, for, for student ideas. So basically students can apply with ideas for, for good solutions to solve societal problems. And then they can um, pitch those to a committee of experts who come from industry, business, and government, and university. And then they get help to uh, what we call ideation, is where you get help to develop your idea further. And, and so it's a process where students are trying to come up with innovative ways of solving problems in their daily life, in society around them, and then they get help from people who work in the sector who can help them understand if this is something they can build on, develop, and maybe even turn into a startup business. And the students acquire skills and they become creative and learn some entrepreneurial skills. So even if it doesn't, like the result is not necessarily a successful company, it's still giving students um, the chance to really be creative and engage with real world problems, try to find solution and then get mentoring on this. Uh, so we think it has a lot of value and we're trying to do the same with the research as such to make sure that our research at PhD students that they meet with and talk to people in the sector so that they can do research on real problems that people actually want them to help solve. Um, so this dialogue to really make sure that academics are not working in isolation and the students get exposure, uh, we believe that that can really benefit. Um, so that's that's just an example from what we're doing. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other example? Uh, uh, Helen, uh, would you be kind enough to email me this case study so that we can put it in the report and so everyone would know that? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, we are just now uh, focused on education, but I know there are other systems, societal systems that we also need to look at. Uh, and I'm reading here, uh, Nesab, uh, Nesab C is saying the list is endless. So can you give some examples?
Hello. A team. I, I don't think she could listen, but don't worry. We can put her an email if we want. Okay, there is another. Uh, yeah, Elena David Teodai. Uh, yeah, Elena, you are saying that social inequalities in compulsory acquisition of land in uh, Peri Urban. Yeah, your case study is wonderful. I have heard a brief of it before. So can you give us an example to share, uh, like so that others know? Alina, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes, I can hear you. Um, sorry, my connection is not really that good. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you now. Thank you. Okay. No, um, I've, I've done a study uh, with regards to compulsory acquisition for the purpose of uh, uh, town expansion. And I've noticed that uh, in one of the towns in Namibia, and I've noticed that there is so many injustice that is actually done and I'm wondering that why is the policy makers are not actually paying attention to the policies that are actually, uh, that has got to do with um, um, compulsory acquisition or expropriation of land. And um, you will see that the methods that um, the local authorities or the municipalities are using are actually, you know, um, if you are looking at a town somewhere, a new town in a village or whatever, and um, you will see that some of the local authorities, they are using the method of exp town expansion of baby uh, metropolitan cities and so forth. And yet you are looking at a small town whereby um, the, the town is kind of surviving on farming activities and so forth you will see that the, the way, you know, the community is handled, there's no communication, the people are not, you know, educated in terms of uh, compulsory acquisitions and the process are not explained. The, the, the compensation is not based on market uh, valuation and things like that. And um, the sad part is then when you realize that um, the people that are mainly affected could be, you know, people that are uh, elderly people in the age of uh, 70 to 80 years. And, and it's, it's just sometimes not fair. And I'm just thinking, yes, policies, policy makers, they need really to, to make a difference. We need that, something needs to be addressed. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, very good example. And I also heard yesterday on extraction uh, industry, and this case was in Africa, and uh, they went all these policies and they gave compensation, but still the uh, end user or, or, the, uh, or the primary stakeholders were not happy with that. And so they went for the review of the process. So you, there are some uh, uh, instruments where you can ask for the review of whether this consultation went properly or not. And actually uh, it was decided that the consultation did go well, but uh, the stakeholders did not achieve what they wanted. And that was like a pity to hear uh, that though the stakeholders engagement uh, process is there uh, most of the time, but it is like a tick box exercise. Now I'm going to read a few comments here, which are going into the chat. And uh, I, I agree with Hazel's last comment. Uh, I will go to the other, other comments uh, afterwards, but here I Hazel is saying that, yes, it needs to be cynical uh, oh, I mean, sorry, it is, I am increasing cynical, but without being able to, oh no, sorry, this is comment to the other thing. So let me go back to the all the chat. Uh, uh, 
Yes, Zoe has mentioned the UK net zero target 2050 with Innovate UK and the development of smart cities. So Zoe, would you want to speak anything about it? Yes, um, hello. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Zoe Almazan. I'm a lecturer here at Kingston University in, of London. However, I am approaching global uh, sustainable futures to represent Latin America. I am from Mexico, so I would like to use this platform to educate and find research activities. Um, I would like to take the net zero target, uh, obviously, which is reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2050, which is a UK regulation, but implement that into Latin America. So there are currently very little uh, net zero buildings in Latin America. So the goal would be to design and use this platform or this regulation and apply it to Latin America. Also the design of, of smart cities in regards to several subjects such as the coronavirus um, pandemic happening and how can we uh, redesign cities in a more sustainable approach. So I'm just also trying to understand the platform, but also want to brainstorm ideas of how we can actually collaborate. And I'm also an architect, but I am in uh, the department of construction. So I deal with a lot of construction industries as well. And the company Innovate Uve UK is a platform where we invite construction industries to collaborate with researchers at universities. So it's an interesting collaboration between the industry and obviously academics to find a common goal. So if we can use those platforms also and implement them in other regions of the world, it, it's a good collaboration. Yeah. Yes, uh, so coming back to this topic in the context of this topic, uh, what do you think, who are your stakeholders? Well, obviously, in this case, I, I'd like to focus more on, well, I like to actually, before answering that, I would like to just listen okay. to everyone's else. All right, not to, worry. not to worry, not to worry. That's okay. Yes, yes, but thank you very much for your insight into like where you are looking forward and how you want to drive your uh, initiative towards helping Mexico. So yeah. it's great to see, uh, listen, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, then another comment from, yeah, Nisa Bezi, a team is saying that her connection is poor, so she's trying to type your responses, so never mind, I will read your responses, thank you. Uh, uh, Hazel is giving us a quite good, uh, um, saying that, Okay, how we can change hearts and minds so that companies can buy in. And that is what actually we want to do with the stakeholder engagements, isn't it? Uh, but, but, uh, oh, sorry, she is saying how we can change hearts and minds so that companies can buy in. So uh, yes, I think Marcus and others uh, raised a point that, uh, no, I think Elena, sorry, Elena raised the point that we cannot uh, change uh, policymakers and others. Uh, so th there we need to focus. And here, actually, yeah, Hazel is saying that how we can change the uh, perceptions of policymakers. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Do anyone want to speak? I know. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, and that is very interesting. They themselves should be accepting the fact that the stakeholders are important. Uh, and, uh, and maybe uh, the we, we as a researcher or NGOs or uh, best practice people who are uh, like excellent or believe in these should be advocating more and more and putting pressure on them uh, as well as educating them that this is going, the comprehensive uh, arrangement of having a meaningful stakeholder engagement is not a head of job, but it will bring 
uh, overall uh, sustainable future, all of them who are involved in the system and no one will be left out. And I think uh, here we have an opportunity to our role actually. And Ilio is saying environmental injustice and environmental racism. Ilio, would you like to explain something more on this? Well, good morning, everyone. And just uh, leave a comment. You're here from Brazil speaking. Uh, me, Dr. Irene, Dr. Rosaline. So uh, congratulations to everyone. And especially in the term of uh, environment injustice, we were working a lot on natural disasters and on the network. We just held the second workshop and it was a pretty good success. And in our network, we proposed to, to be a multidisciplinary group. We got engineers, we got teachers, we got biology, lawyer, uh, uh, architect also. So we have a different approach. We're trying to create a bigger group to develop different kind of proposals to address against the environmental injustice. But here in our context, we have a uh, big difficulty uh, when we're talking about stakeholders. We have a huge gap between the higher education institutions, the research that we are developing, and the interests of them. Uh, the main interest of them is the profit, the economic profit, you know? So we are basically attached to government, uh, to the government found and the cause of the government found. And we are struggling without some, uh, some end capital to de develop that research. And we, as Dr. Hazel speak, we are very, we have a very hard time to change the mind in the heart of the companies and uh, because they all, they always looking for economic profit and the researchers and the universities are left behind, you know? If you're not economically profitable to them, you're not, uh, you're not helpful. So we have a big, a big challenge coming ahead but we hope that with our network we can we can overcome this difficulty and make a make some project you know work together and make some good things uh, thank you Ilio. Uh, can you ask Irini if she wants to add something on why we need to have meaningful stakeholders just a minute <laughs> Prof. Denise, gostaria de falar alguma coisinha sobre é, o nosso projeto da rede, e daí eu vou traduzindo. Good morning. Uh, how are you, Renu? How all? Very uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, you can speak, Irini, you can speak in Portuguese, so Ilio can explain us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. É, Hélio, diga, Renuca, a todos que eu entrei às oito da manhã, porque nós tínhamos sempre quatro horas de diferença, não é? E por isso me atrasei. <risos> Na verdade, eu me adiantei uma hora. <risos> Peço desculpas. Então, uh, so, here in Brazil, we got a, a little bit uh, time problem, so we, we entered the meeting at 8, 8 a.m., so... Now we had to reschedule the, the meeting, but everything is now set and done well. I, okay. Yes, sorry for that, but uh, it was uh, someone who answered me and then it has changed automatically. It was not me, so I, there was some technical problem, but I will make sure next time. Thank you. Okay. Um, a, rede, a Rede Internacional de Pesquisa em desenvolvimento ao clima, que eu, vocês, você pode dizer, e a professora Renuca também participamos, é, já me parece que conheci a professora Hazel quando estive lá, 
é, se não me engano, creio que é a professora Hazel, é, eu, nós temos como propósito desenvolver projetos, como você disse, nas diversas áreas, né? onde sustentabilidade, é, gestão é, de, da mudança do clima, não é? onde é, a questão ambiental e qualidade de vida possa ser incluída como um dos itens principais. So our main goal is not to focus on only one area, you know. So we got sustainability issues and we got some uh, climate change issues and we don't have to uh, take care of them with just one perspective, you know. So lawyers can talk about sustainability, uh, engineers can talk about sustainability, teachers, professors can about can talk about sustainability and climate changes. The, these are issues related to every area. And our network here in Brazil are trying to bring all the different areas together to improve and make something really solid to, go to, uh, to work in this team. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Irini. Uh, Irini. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, please carry on. É, é, então, é, nós gostaríamos de convidar a todos os presentes para, se quiserem participar desta, desta nossa rede, nós estamos sempre agrupando é, gru pequenos grupos que tenham temáticas parecidas ou que queiram pesquisar numa, num mesmo tema para fazer projetos integrados em vários países. Hoje temos representantes já em 10 países. É só isso. Muito obrigada. And for, uh, we'd like to invite you all to contribute with our group, with our network. We have, I think, eight or nine different groups who have different proposals. Uh, each one can develop something that they like to do, they are related to do. Uh, and we're living here, uh, inviting you guys to uh, make part of this group and contribute with us also. Vamos colocar uh, um e-mail, um e-mail uh, no... Professor, I have already já. introduced your group to these all people, so don't worry. I have already uh, spoken about your group, so I am a coordinator between both groups, so don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Rosini, would you like to speak at all for this uh, stakeholder, why, why meaningful stakeholder engagement is important? You are muted, Rosini. Microfone. Bom dia a todos. O Hélio, por favor, poderia depois traduzir. É um prazer né, participar novamente dessas rodadas de discussões. E inicialmente, é, nós pensamos dentro da universidade uma proposta para essa, essa reunião e para essa chamada de é, pensarmos na estruturação curricular das universidades, todos os cursos, dentro de um eixo temático de sustentabilidade e, ao mesmo tempo, com a implantação de práticas é, que já introduzem né, e que dão continuidade a esse plano geral de estruturação. Então, é, na União Oeste, a gente tem já implantado o sistema de energia solar, né, a professora Irene também é, pode depois complementar, Pensamos na questão das áreas verdes dentro das instituições como fonte de captação de carbono e também áreas de infiltração, eh, embelezamento, áreas de convivência. Eh, e isso tudo integrado nos currículos com os cursos, dando as suas contribuições. Então, Hélio, por favor, se você puder resumir e traduzir né, para quem não, não entende português. Obrigada. Então, o principal foco do nosso projeto 
is on the higher education institutions, mainly on here on our city, Cascavel Paraná, uh, where we're trying to bring up together the curriculum or the curricula and of these different courses and make the university, the institution more sustainable. Here we have uh, a project of solar panels already, some green areas to improve the quality of the, uh, the air and make the areas more sociable, more beautiful, more comfortable, and also sustainable. So we, we are, we, our task is to bring up all the different courses as we speak before, like uh, physical therapy, medicine, uh, pharmacy, biology, uh, teachers of different courses to make part of the sustainable institution because it's not only the, the the role is not only of the biologist you know everyone has to be part of it so our project is aiming to work in the different curriculums of all courses of the institution yes thank you that is very important and what I see here that students and staff are very important stakeholders of our education system. And therefore uh, we need to always have a meaningful engagement with them so that they can uh, take the legacy of sustainable development and practices and so on uh, in future. Uh, so thank you very much, Rosalini. And so I, I'm going to read your uh, Hazel's comment um, and Jonathan's comment, yeah. So Jonathan is, is saying that enhancing livelihoods and social education focused on environment management. Jonathan, would you like to speak at all? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Renuka. Um, in my thought, I think that um, uh, to enhance, to enhance livelihood, uh, and social education in the context of uh, environmental management will be a good way to, uh, to engage uh, different stakeholders uh, in this area because uh, local community are now involved in uh, different activities so that to, uh, to manage the forest with uh, uh, University of Lubumbashi and uh, uh, sometimes the, the owners of uh, mining activities are also involved in that kind of activities. And we made uh, some, um, some uh, activities in order to convince them uh, to be part of that uh, kind of activities. And it was so uh, very uh, interesting for us. That's why I think uh, it is very important now to demonstrate uh, to the local community that uh, uh, manage uh, to manage to manage the forest it is also very important to have uh, some outcomes and uh, and so forth that's why they can and they can accept uh, the proposal that we can uh, we can give them if there is no demonstration uh, in that way i think it is uh, it will be for us very difficult. Uh, uh, the owners of mining activities must also be must, uh, want to know how the, uh, what is the benefit from uh, from that uh, activities, and then we say to them that it is uh, they will um, they will uh, contribute to the Red Plus process in our country, and. Um, uh, the ministry of uh, our country, the environmental ministry uh, that uh, of our country must uh, come to uh, uh, to help them and to help us in order to uh, to protect forests and to do uh, some uh, um, uh, some livelihood activities. That's why I think it is very important first to to convince them to demonstrate uh, the benefits that can they can have from those activities and then they can they can be involved in, uh, yes, in the project. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jonathan. I, I believe that community has always come to the terms of what was 
proposed to them or offered to them. And now uh, we need to change that business as usual. And therefore we need to educate mm -hmm. the community and the stakeholders, primary stakeholders of each and every system, societal systems like food, transport, education, uh, whatever we think of. And that is very important. And therefore we need to engage with these stakeholders. Here I'm going to read with Hazel, uh, Hazel's comment. She says, yes, one of the biggest issues with the commercial focus, so this is, I think she's referring to Hazel's uh, comment, that commercial focus is that economics come before environmental protection. Until we reach the point where the general public are forcing the issue, we will always struggle. In the UK, we can see how the public voice can be uh, change leading the issue of plastic is a prime example and I think that is a very good example plastic has uh, rejected by the community and uh, it has shown some changes I, I won't say that we have made a lot of change but definitely we are going towards uh, And she also says, absolutely, we need to have solidarity, solidarity of purpose and of voice. Agreed, agreed. Also, she says, everyone has to be part of it, yes, but that means that we need to engage with those who are not currently in agreement with us and joining with like-minded people will only give us so much far along the road we need to travel. So uh, this is very good again. And then uh, Helen is uh, putting a comment that there's a fine balance between stakeholder engagement that supports or undermines critical inquiry. Funding from stakeholder means stringing attached and obligations. So it demands a process of upfront discussion and negotiation around contracts. Industry operates in a different mode as compared to public universities seeing knowledge as private property. Absolutely, I agree with this. And so even if the institutions or the organizations are going towards uh, sustainable, uh, are uh, driving themselves towards sustainability, they do not, they do not share whole practices um, in the public or uh, knowledge to the stakeholders. Uh, and there, also, there is also some sort of greenwashing in institutions, which does not allow to get into the deepest uh, change which we want uh, to be getting embedded into the each and every individual who is uh, related to the organizations. Uh, now, I think we will have to bring this to this discussion to end because of the time. Uh, but I would encourage you to en uh, engage with e each other or take this, our dialogue to the wider society, wherever it is possible, wherever you go as our ambassadors for full stakeholder engagement. So I will now move to uh, Jonathan, who is going to present his poster. And I'm going to share that poster just now, and Jonathan, you are you can you feel free to speak on it, okay? Okay. Here, I hope everyone can see. Uh, but I should have made it bigger. Let me uh, share again, sorry.
Yes, that's better screen, isn't it? Jonathan, you can start now. Hello. Can everyone see? Uh, yes, yes, I can see, Dr. Uh, yes. We can Jonathan, see, it's fine. Uh, can you uh, please start your presentation? Jonathan, are you having any problem with this? Like voice, we can't hear you. Hello, Jonathan. I think we have lost him and uh, he may explain uh, when he comes back, but I can, uh, I, I think I will scroll down to just read it. So he is going, he has suggested this poster and it is on the management and conservation of Miambo woodland in a mining region. And the context is that Katanga is a geographical region that covers four provisions and hosts the Katangan Copper Belt. This region is also known as the regional center of endemism in Zambezian region. It is covered at more than 80% by the Mimamo, uh, Miombo forest. It is a source of a number of ecosystem services. For example, Questarium, Timber, NTFCs, Caterpillar, Mushroom, etc., that contributes to the climate regulation and well being of local communities. Unfortunately, the current management and exploitation techniques, as well as mining activities, are the main causes of the declining of Miyamo superficies and provided services. Pending a better management plan to high value species. And he has given some scientific names of the species. Miyamo woodland can effectively contribute to the well-being of the local communities. So the main question this post investigates is that how the management plan will be implemented in order to strengthen the conservation restoration plan of the Miyamo forest in the mining contest. So the role of University of Lubunbashi is to contribute to the implementation of the best management practices. Unilo has resumed research on the Miyamo since 2008 while the faculty of agro agronomic sciences. They are focused on vegetation and species ecology and NTFCs, carbon sink and nutrition cycles and valuation of other ecosystem services. More specifically, interactions with the mining sector are studied to better mainstream Miyamo conservation in mining operations. Unilu is the member of COSO, that is Social Economic Observatory of Southern African Woodland Network since its creation. So I think he is trying to explain us what is the problem and uh, management plan could allow, a proper management plan could allow conservation restoration in this context and he, their university is playing an important role in trying to implement best management practices. I'm sorry that we have lost him just in the time where we wanted him. Um, 
however, it is good to see some examples like this where universities have engaged with a real problem, real societal problem and trying to help the community. And this is also important uh, in the context of our stakeholder engagement that why we need to have a meaningful stakeholder because it would be a win-win situation for the forest industry as well and the community and the uh, research institution which has uh, been involved in it. And now we will move to anyone who wants to put any closing comments. Can I, can I make a comment, please? Um, yes, please. Uh, my name is Fanen from Nigeria. And um, I mean, I want to uh, say that it's, it is interesting to see how um, different disciplines uh, come together to discuss um, um, uh, sustainability and um, meaningful engagement in their own disciplinary language. Uh, our, our conversation has diverse and then, um, oh, sorry, was diverse, and then uh, we have different perception about how we see sustainability. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I, it is interesting that, and I think it is very diverse. We are looking to become more diverse, but also more inclusive. And that is what we are trying to do. We want uh, everyone to speak, everyone to take the message out and be an ambassador for our sustainable futures. And that is what I inspire through this network. And so I welcome that you bring your colleagues also for the next time when we meet. And I will welcome more activities also such like this, any uh, topic which you think that is relevant. Uh, initially, I wanted to speak about systems thinking uh, again, which is very relevant to the stakeholder engagement because we need to engage with the, all the stakeholders along the whole system of whatever we are focusing, that is food, food or education or transport or build environment or construction or whatever. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Still any closing comments? Yeah, um, my closing comment it was very good to be able to have Mount Lingo because we're able to hello, at least also to have people from me. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes, uh, hold on for a minute, uh, Michael. I am uh, on the phone with Jonathan and he has called us. I will, uh, Jonathan, I did. Uh, I think you lost, we lost you, and I just read your poster. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry that we lost you, but definitely maybe we will accum uh, accommodate you in the next meeting. Uh, uh, Oh, I am sorry. I don't know. There is some technical mistake. Maybe you can restart your computer or something. I'm uh, so don't worry. We will definitely accommodate your activity next time. Uh, it is a surprising. Actually, Jonathan is saying that uh, he got disconnected, and now when he's trying to connect with us, it says that you will not be able to connect any time. So I don't know, he is having some technical uh, problem. Uh, I hope you can uh, get through this problem, but if you have uh, anything where we can help, then please let us know, like let me know through an email and maybe I can help you. I'm not sure why this has happened, but otherwise everyone here on the platform yet. Uh, and I was just trying to close because it's already now one o'clock. So anyway, thank you very much for your help in this activity, but we will try to accommodate next time. All right, bye-bye.
So uh, that is it. So yeah, uh, thank you very much everyone for your time. And I'm looking forward to have an interesting activities in the following, in this year. Yes, do you want to say? Thanks, you uh, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. You did well, well thank done. You. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a good You're day, welcome. bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Junior Matthew, Junior Matthew,